I myself had many limiting beliefs about my capacity uh, and the willingness of other people or the market to create this life that I have now. I know I wanted it, but I had many limiting beliefs about its feasibility. So I kept putting it off for, I would say, six months to a year. I kept putting it off. Even after I had crystallized exactly how I wanted my day-to-day life to look and feel, I still kept postponing the decisions that would allow me to start putting the pieces together. Welcome to Wiseish. On this show, we combine modern neuroscience with ancient wisdom so you can master your emotions, heal your relationships, and pass on a legacy that you're proud of. I'm your host, Dr. Kavita. I'm a Harvard-trained physician and a double board certified psychiatrist. And my passion is to teach you the tools that help me create the life of my dreams. Let's get started. Hello, hello, wisdom seekers, my co-travelers on this messy, imperfect, and beautiful journey. How are you all doing? I'm so happy to be talking to you today. I am sitting in my backyard here in California. We're here, we've moved here to Palo Alto for a year, and then we're going to be going back to Connecticut. So if any of you live in or around San Francisco or Palo Alto and would like to meet up, let me know in the uh, comments or the review section under the podcast, and I'd love to connect. So yeah, I'm sitting in my backyard here. It's sunny and there's some butterflies and bees buzzing around and there are lemon trees and lime trees and oranges and figs and olive trees. It's just beautiful. It is really a slice of heaven here. And I am actually, I was saying to Kristen this morning that I have rearranged my business, my life, my programs, um, and my time such that I feel really expansive and centered and grounded and creative right now. It is a beautiful, beautiful feeling. But to get to this feeling, I, I knew that that's what I wanted to create. So I had that as a sort of um, a North Star, if you will. That was a direction in which I was going. But to get there, there was some, you know, stumbling and some letting go of things that it's not that they weren't working necessarily. It's just it was not going to be in alignment with this North Star that I wanted to create. So I had to go through that phase and I'm really glad that I did. And I'm really glad I had this North Star to guide me and keep me from crashing onto the rocks or giving up, you know? Um, Yeah, it's just a wonderful lesson and a wonderful season right now. All right, so today... I'm going to talk to you about limiting beliefs. What? It's a perfect segue, right? Because I myself had many limiting beliefs about my capacity uh, and the willingness of other people or the market to create this life that I have now. I know I wanted it, but I had many limiting beliefs about its feasibility. So I kept putting it off for... I would say six months to a year, I kept putting it off. Even after I had crystallized exactly how I wanted my day-to-day life to look and feel, I still kept postponing the decisions that would allow me to start putting the pieces together, right? And so I want to talk to you today about how do you actually find what your limiting beliefs are? Because these are the three things that I used to figure out what my limiting beliefs are that is keeping me self-sabotaging and stuck and 
repeating the same patterns, even though I'm saying that I want something else. So you might be, you know, maybe you're struggling with a goal that you've set for yourself in your profession or your career or work or in your parenting, your children or something in your relationship with yourself or something in your relationship with your mom or spouse, right? Maybe it's um, something related to finances or your health or weight, right? There are so many things that we all want, but then these limiting beliefs get in the way of us actually taking steps and creating, paving the path towards that North Star. So as I'm sharing with you these three ways that you can figure out what those limiting beliefs are, because if you're not even aware of them, how are you going to change them, right? You just know that I keep saying I want this, but I keep doing this and you don't know why. And you're frustrated with yourself and maybe you criticize yourself or admonish yourself, but that doesn't seem to help either. So I want to show you how to first find your limiting beliefs. And then next week, the podcast is going to be on how to shift them. Okay. All right. So as I'm sharing with you the three tools you can use to find your limiting beliefs, I want you to actually pick something, a situation, a circumstance in your life that you feel stuck in and you're noticing that you're saying you want to do this or experience this, but you keep repeating the same old, same old behaviors and habits, right? There's a disconnect between your stated goal and desire and your actual lived experience day to day. So pick a situation or a circumstance like that and then see how you can apply these three tools to that specific situation. In any kind of inner transformation work, I have over and over seen the power of specificity, okay? A lot of us stay in the gray, abstract, wishy-washy world when we're talking about the kind of person we want to be or the things we want to do or what we want to create. It's all a kind of la-la land, fuzzy wuzziness in our language and in our thoughts. And the more vague you are, that much like, less likely are you to achieve that thing, okay? So the more specific you can get then, it naturally follows that it's kind of like clearing the fog and you're suddenly seeing a new vistas, right? It's like inputting the address on your GPS, right? Instead of saying, I want to go somewhere in Florida, it's not going to get you to that specific destination that you're trying to get to if you just type in Florida. But if you type in the door number, the street address, the town, and the pin code, now you have a clear path from where you are to where you want to go. So specificity, I cannot stress how important it is. Okay. So I want you to pick one specific thing and then think about how to apply the three tools I'm going to share with you. All right. Let's jump into tool number one. The first tool to figuring out what your limiting beliefs are is to notice what do you complain about? Okay, what do you repeatedly complain about? Maybe you complain about, you know, I hate my job, but... I'm stuck here because, uh, you know, I make more money and childcare is too expensive and I live in a country that, you know, doesn't uh, provide for free childcare. And so my spouse, you know, is a musician and isn't making that much money right now. So I'm stuck. I hate it, but I'm stuck. I hate it, but this is what I have to do. Okay. And if that is a recurrent complaint of yours, for now, just notice it and jot it down. In that specific circumstance that you have picked for this exercise, what are your recurrent complaints? Write it out exactly as you would actually say it. Again, don't be vague. Use your actual words and write it down. No one cares. 
I'm alone. I have to do everything in this house. Otherwise, you know, the dishes would just pile up and hit the ceiling. Or if I don't um, work this hard, then we won't be able to provide for our kids the way we want. So I just have no choice, whatever it is. Or I try to lose weight, but my spouse keeps bringing cupcakes and, you know, junk food into the house. And so I'm trapped. There's no way. It's it's impossible, right? Whatever it is, what is your specific complaint or complaints? Maybe it's more than one. What are the things you often say over and over about why something is the way it is? Right? Actually pause and take a second to jot those down. Now, when I say limiting beliefs, it doesn't mean that your circumstances are not real. I'm not saying maybe you really are in a relationship where you're the major breadwinner right now. And so you feel a lot of pressure to keep going to the job that you dislike. I'm not saying that circumstance might not be true right now. What I am saying is that then translating in your mind to, and so I have to stay in this miserable job and that's my lot in life. It is impossible for me to feel differently about this. That part is your limiting belief, not the temporary circumstance, but what you then make that mean about you, about other people, and about the world, and about your future. There's your limiting belief. Okay? So write down your complaints. And first, don't edit them. Just vomit out what do you tend to normally say. Use your own words. Write it all down. And only when you have finished writing down, go back and look for what might be the hidden limiting beliefs here. Okay? The number two, second tool that you can use to figure out what your limiting beliefs are is what do you and your friends talk about when you get together or when you are on the phone? What do you guys typically commiserate over? Because research has shown over and over that we tend to be a sort of a conglomerate of the people that we hang out with the most. So you are very similar to your friends right now. That's, that's human nature, right? We are social pack animals and we tend to get together with people who have similar beliefs and similar complaints and similar ways of looking at the world as we do right now. That's not good or bad. It just is. So think about what do my friends and I often chat about commiserate on or vent about to each other when we get together or when we're on the phone. This is a rich, rich minefield of data that you can gather. Okay, there is unlimited gold to be mined here. If you are honest and gentle with yourself, knowing that that doesn't make you or your friends wrong. It's just a way for us to peek in to our own minds at this moment. That's all. Okay. Doesn't make your friendships wrong. It doesn't make, it doesn't mean anything about anything. It is just a tool. So that's the second way. Again, take a few moments right now. Pause the podcast if you can. Of course, if you're driving, don't do that. <laughs> but if you're folding laundry or, you know, cooking or doing something where you can safely pause the podcast and grab a piece of paper and jot these things down, you will 10x, minimum 10x, the power and the transformation that you get from this podcast and the tools that I'm sharing with you. Okay, so that's the second tool. The third one is journaling. 
I'll tell you what I've discovered about journaling, right? I always journal thinking that I know what the problem is about something. And I think that I'm journaling just to get it out, right? And this happens every time. Even though I usually have an aha moment that I never did think about, next time when I'm prompted to journal because I'm stuck somewhere, I still go into it thinking, oh, I know what it is. I just need to get it out. (laughs) But here's the thing. When you use journaling correctly, it's not just a method to let things out. It is that as well. And there's a lot of benefit to just letting it all out because once you have seen it on paper, you have acknowledged that that is what is going on inside, you're much less likely to ruminate on it. Okay? So just that is huge, powerful. But that's not the only reason. It's not the only benefit of journaling. The other benefit, and in my opinion, a deeper benefit of journaling, is that if you continue, and this is the important part, if you continue to journal for a few minutes, just two or three minutes, after the moment where you think that you got everything out, right? I'm going to repeat that. You know how when we're journaling, we think at a certain point, we're like, all right, that's it. Yeah, I got it all out. That's all I have to say or think or feel about this. At that moment, remind yourself to keep going for another two or three minutes, another page or so, at least. And just keep writing whatever is occurring to you, right? Maybe you write, I don't know why I'm writing more. I don't really have any more thoughts about this. I mean, I've thought this over and over. What's the point? Aha, there itself, there is another gold nugget in that it shows that you're feeling hopeless about that, right? So keep going for a page or two or three minutes after the point at which you think that you're done with journaling. That's where the real power of journaling will come out because everything that you already know in your head is in your conscious mind. You know those thoughts because you think them over and over about that issue. There's nothing new there and it's good to get it out. Great. But when you go past that conscious point, you will then start delving into the subconscious beliefs and those are the ones that actually run our lives. They're like the internal operating system, okay? And oftentimes we're not even aware of them because we're just rehearsing the known conscious story and narrative over and over. So that's the third tool, but you got to use it in a way where you go under the surface, okay? So quick, quick, quick summary three tools for first finding your limiting beliefs, because if you don't find them, you cannot change them. So pick a situation where you feel stuck, where you notice that you're saying you want something else, but you keep repeating and creating the same old, same old, and you feel frustrated about that, right? Take that situation and then do these three, use these three tools. Number one, write down What are your common complaints about that issue? And write it out in your own words. Number two, think about what do my friends and I talk about, vent, or commiserate on with regard to this issue, okay? And then number three, journal on it. But Whenever you get to a point in the journaling where you feel like you've let out everything that you know, that you consciously are aware of about that issue, once you let it all out, then continue to dig for a few minutes after that point, which is where the gold is, which is where you're starting to open the door and peek into your subconscious mind. All right? 
So I would love to know if you found this helpful. I would love to know in the comments, in the review section. When you subscribe to the podcast and you review the podcast, it helps us reach more people. And that's really the only way that we can share these tools with the world. So if you found this helpful, I would be so grateful. That's my only ask of you is, would you please subscribe and give us a review if you enjoyed it? So more people can find the podcast and and get the tools that they might need, right? I would love that. Thank you in advance. And with that, watch out for next week's podcast where I'll show you how to shift those limiting beliefs. But first, be sure to do these three exercises so you can have those limiting beliefs in front of you when we meet for next week's session. All right. I hope this was helpful. Again, if so, please subscribe, leave us a review. I love you and I can't wait to talk to you next week. Same time, same place. Love you. Bye. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and that you're leaving with some great takeaways and maybe even some breakthroughs. If you're ready to master these tools and apply them to your life, come join us in Mastery. It's our monthly membership program where we help you customize these tools to your life. Plus, we coach you and support you along the way. You can get all the details at bit.ly forward slash masters of fate. That's one word, no space, masters of fate. bit.ly forward slash masters of fate. The link is in the show notes. I hope to see you there.